have been talking about uh, various things related to the genesis, scope, uh, you know, then uh, of the environmental geomechanics. And uh, in the last lecture, I talked about the particle energy field theory. And uh, I gave you some hints that uh, maybe this is one of the ways to uh, address the issues which modern day society is facing. And uh, this is where I also gave you an idea about uh, that this subject requires interdisciplinary approach. You should have an open mind and a very different way of looking at the things, you know, unconventional observation of the things which I was talking about. And uh, we discussed for subsequently the long term phenomena, short term phenomena. We also talked about the uh, basics you know which are involved in or the assumptions which have been made for analysis of uh, geotechnical engineering systems. And then uh, we were discussing about the shortcomings uh, which are prevailing in conventional geomechanics. And uh, I suggested a sort of a, a neo classification system which should be implemented uh, for understanding the soils better and their response under various environmental uh, you know, uh, fluxes or stresses, you may call it. And uh, in today's le lecture, I will be talking about the details of the particle energy field theory. Uh, the subtopics would be uh, the components of uh, PEF theory, uh, what are the assumptions involved in this. I uh, will be talking about different types of energy fields. Until now, I have been talking about Apart from mechanical stresses, what are the stresses which influence the geomaterials? So, today we will try to explain uh, these things in greater details and then comes the applications of all these uh, situations or the energy fields which we are going to talk about, alright. And then uh, studies which are conducted by uh, IIT Bombay researchers, my students and uh, how we have tackled different types of energy fields and their response on the geomaterials and vice versa. That is the response of the geomaterial when it comes in contact with different types of energy fields. So, this is what I will be discussing under realm of uh, particle energy field theory. So, this theory as I discussed in the previous lecture also uh, was pronounced or proposed by uh, Professor H. Y. Fang, the personality uh, who has done lot of work in environmental geotechnology and uh, the credit goes to him for um, coining this idea. So, the major components of this uh, theory are elementary particles, particle system and then energy fields. And uh, in addition to this, we talk about the different phenomena which occur in the environment and which are posing great difficulty in understanding you know how to model them, how to incorporate them in our in our models. So, now what happens is if you have these type of questions in mind uh, as we discussed in the previous lecture, uh, ion exchange reaction, adsorption, redox reaction, soil bacterial interaction, mineralogical alteration all these issues have to be uh, talked about. So, what we are trying to see is uh, these are the good examples of how a geomaterial would interact with a given energy field and ultimately what happens to this. So, good example is if I if I am trying to see the reaction between a geomaterial and the chemical flux, the first thing which I should be doing is I will be talking about the ion exchange reactions. Sometimes we also call this as a cation exchange capacity of the material. So, this is the quantification of the interaction between the geomaterials and the energy fields. Similarly, adsorption. All right, we will be talking about this redox reaction, these are all the chemical reactions where the reduction of and oxidation of the material might be happening because of uh, different environmental condition. Soil bacterial interaction we have discussed a lot, mineralogical alteration. Uh, as we have been discussing, when geomaterials come in contact with the you know extreme environmental conditions like very high temperatures and very high concentrations of chemicals, their mineralogy gets altered. And one good example of mineralogical alteration is uh, zeolite formation. 
zeolite z e o l i t e zeolite so a good example of mineralogical alteration would be zeolite formation which i'll be discussing in details so these are the practical applications you know where the particle energy field theory can be employed directly so now let me introduce one by one the major components of uh, pef theory and we will begin with elementary particles so what are the assumptions associated with this theory the first assumption is that the matter constitutes of atoms ions and molecules i am taking back you to your chemistry classes uh, and the particles may attract or repel each other uh, depending upon their charges all right and hence the following particle systems can be formed i hope you are aware of this so solids is the attraction between the uh, particles and uh, gases are neutral one of all forces and the liquids where the interaction or the particle attraction is uh, you know sorry not neutral gases is where the repulsion is much more and the liquids are slightly neutral or somewhere in between so this is where we talk about the bonding energy most of the geo environmental engineering issues in contemporary world are pivoting around the application of bonding energy a good example would be suppose soil is contaminated with some contaminant now this contaminant could be in the gaseous phase it could be in the liquid phase and it could be even in the solid phase clear crystallization what microbes do inside the soil system so under all these circumstances there is a bond which gets created between the soil and the contaminant this is part clear now if i want to do the remediation of the soil if i want to clean it up you remember the four five scopes of the environmental geotechnology which i talked about uh, there was one scope which deals with remediation of contaminated lands okay if you could not control the spread of contaminants and if the geomaterials get contaminated too much then you would like to clean them all right remedial actions so when you talk about the remediation you have to break the bond between the geomaterial and the contaminant clear and this bonding could be ionic it could be covalent it could be a dipole interaction or so on so the crux of the situation is that when you talk about remediation of soils you have to study what is the bond strength and how these bonds can be broken and your 10 plus 2 understanding of the chemistry would tell you i can heat up the material to break the bond i can wash the material to break the bond i can use some chemicals to break the bond is this correct or you may devise another method to break the bond ultimately it boils down to the bonding energy so nowadays we have different tools in the market and good example would be ftir analysis uh, which i will talk about subsequently fourier transform infrared spectroscopy ftir analysis ftir analysis tells you what type of contamination the system has because if you look at the patterns of the ftir analysis you can make out what type of bonding exists in the system and then i can create a strategy to get rid of this is this part okay a good example of uh, breaking of the bond could be suppose if you take heavy water which has lot of minerals in it and if i boil it so what happens all your carbonates they settle down they get dissociated from the liquid phase so what you have done you have broken the bond between the ions which are present in the system and the water molecules all right so these type of strategies are utilized to decontaminate uh, the geomaterials now coming to the elementary particles all of you know the elementary particles are electron proton and neutron and uh, depending upon the charge uh, we have sometimes neutral systems or sometimes we have charged systems and charged systems are known as ions 
Now, ions could be of two types, we have cations and we have anions. You are refreshing your chemistry, 10 plus 2 chemistry, clear? So, cations are the ones which are positively charged, magnesium, sodium, potassium, calcium, iron, all those things, fine. Anions are the chlorides, oxygen, hydroxyl, OH and so on, ammonium ion. But before we come to that, uh, we will differentiate between the ions also. Now, whatever we have listed here, these are the simple ions, individual ions. Sometimes they could be in a group also, like I said ammonium ion, so NH4, all right. Then we have atoms, sodium, magnesium, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen. So, when you are trying to analyze the soils, you have to do the atomic analysis to understand what are its constituents and what are the charges which the soil system is carrying and what are the species of cations or anions which are present in the system. Now, these are the poly atom ions which we were talking about, all right. Hydroxyl is OH minus NO3 nitrate and carbonates CO3 minus 2 and uh, so on. Now, if there is a sharing of electrons, what will happen? The sharing of electron will bind the atoms together to create a particle which is known as a molecule. So, water is a molecule, HCl is a molecule, ammonia is a molecule, methane is a molecule. Little bit of chemistry is required, I will not use much of this, all right. But yes, because you are doing environmental geo technology, geo mechanics, so you have to understand a bit of the chemical processes which occur inside the uh, system. Is this fine? The second component is the particle systems. What are the particle systems which we can think of? So, we have three phases of the matter, solid, liquid and gas and similarly we have uh, best example would be of solids, single phase system would be dry soils. We are ignoring air over here, all right. Though it will be constituted, it will be classified as a single phase system because we are ignoring the air. But gases could be contaminants, they are fumes, water vapors and so on. We have uh, let us say saturated soil, all the pores are filled up with water. So, this becomes a two phase system, is this okay? And then we have let us say partially saturated soils or unsaturated soils, uh, this is what is termed as a three phase system. It is very interesting to see how would you model the particle systems uh, which would govern the mechanisms associated with different state of the material. So, first of the mechanism which we would like to study is stress strain relationships. So, for that matter stress strain relationship for the dry soils, partially saturated soils and completely saturated soils are going to be different, all right. And from the response of the load deformation characteristics, we can make out you know whether the system is dry, whether it is partially saturated or is fully saturated. So, this again depends upon how the particles are uh, you know bound with each other. A good example would be water bound mechanism WBM. So, what do you do there? You take different sizes of the particles, uh, you arrange them in a matrix, uh, sprinkle a little bit of water and compact it and ultimately what happens? This forms a excellent bound system on which you design the pavements. All right. Another example would be flow of water through uh, these type of systems which might result dry soils getting transformed to partially saturated soils and partially saturated soils getting transformed to saturated soils. So, again this is a interplay of the energies between uh, you know particles. Reverse process could be I will start with the saturated soils, I will heat it up and then I will create a dry soil. So, I am expelling out one phase from 
the system of the particles and then I am interested in seeing how the response looks like. Mm -hmm.